Good evening, classmates. Last meeting, we already defined what is a dosimeter, and we also discussed some of the properties of a dosimeters. For the continuation, we will start to discuss area survey meters, or also known as area monitoring surveys. Area survey meters, or also known as area monitors, these are the instruments that we use uh, for measuring radiation levels. So we measure those at a particular point in space to assess workplace condition and also to ensure acceptability, safe, and satisfactory radiological conditions in the workplace. So this is very important in radiotherapy facilities. Okay. So uh, the appropriate dose quality quantity that we can use is the ambient dose equivalent. And depending on doses and applications, we use different instruments. Radiation instruments used as survey meters are either gas field detectors or solid states detectors. So these are the common commonly used for radiation protection level instruments. We have ionization chamber, proportional counters, neutron area survey meter, Geiger-Muller or GM counter, scintillator detectors, and the last one is the semiconductor detectors. So these are the survey meters that we use in radiation therapy facility. If you will see, ionization chamber, proportional counters, neutron area survey meter, and the GM counter are gas field detectors, and the scintillator detectors and semiconductor detectors are solid state detectors. So before we tackle each area survey meters that we can use in radiotherapy facility, Let's discuss first the principles of gas field detector and solid state detector. So first, let's discuss the principle of a gas field detector. So this is a simple diagram of a gas field detector. And usually it composed of, of uh, ionization chamber, electrodes, uh, in this diagram, we have two electrodes. This is a negative electrode, and this is a positive electrode. We also have power supply or applied voltage, and we have an electrometer, which is the instrument that we uh, that we can use to measure the radiation levels. So the principle here is that we have a radiation source, and the radiation will enter in the ionization chamber resulting in the ionization of gas. Because of the applied voltage in the electrode, the electrode will create an electric field resulting to the attachment of the positive ions in the negative electrode, and the free electron will attach, will attach to the negative electrode. Once that the uh, free electron attaches to the negative electrode, it will result in creating a signal or pulse or current. And this current or signal pulse will detect by the electrometer. And this electrometer will measure the radiation dose enters in the ionization chamber. And that's how a gas field detector measure the radiation dose. Now, depending upon the size or design of the gas field detector and the voltage applied between two electrodes, the detector can operate in one of the three regions. So in this one, uh, the gas field detector usually operates in ionization chamber, the proportional region, and the GM counter region. So let's discuss first the ionization region. In ionization region, we use ioniz ionization chamber as a um, area monitors. 
So ionization chambers are used in radiotherapy and in diagnostic radiology for the determination of radiation dose. The dose determination in reference irradiation conditions is also called beam calibration. Ionization chambers come in various shapes and sizes depending upon the specific requirements, but generally, generally they all have the following properties that we discussed earlier. So an ionization uh, chamber has a, or is basically a gas-filled cavity surrounded by a conductive outer wall and having a central collecting electrode. The wall and the collecting electrode are separated with a high quality insulator to reduce the leakage current when a polarizing voltage is applied to the chamber. A guard electrode is usually provided in the chamber to further reduce chamber leakage. The guard electrode is also responsible for, uh, for the recombination effect to be, to be avoided. So measurements with open air ionization chamber require temperature and pressure correction to account for the change in the mass of air in the chamber volume, which changes the ambient temperature and pressure. So this is the properties of ionization chamber. So we have the central electrode, which is uh, made of aluminum. So the central electrode is res responsible for collecting the free electrons when there's an ionization of gas. So the outer electrode is responsible for the collection of positive ion. So we have to separate the free electron from the positive ion to avoid the recombination effect. So we also have the insulator to avoid the leakage in the electric field. The next region is the proportional region and the gas field detector that we can use here on this region is the proportional counters. So in the proportional region, there is an ampli uh, amplification of the primary ion signal due to the ionization by collision between ion and gas molecules. Proportional counters are more sensitive than ionization chambers and are suitable for measurement in low intensity radiation fields. The amount of charge collected from each interaction is proportional to the amount of energy deposited in the gas of the counter by the interaction. The simplest proportional counter is generally, generally used for detecting low energy X-rays on the order of few kilo electron volts and very low energy electrons. Proportional counter is a gas ionization device consisting of a cathode, thin anode, wire, and field gas. So the normal property of a gas field detector. Charge produced by ionization in the field gas is multiplied, providing an amplified signal proportional to the original ionization. Multiplication depends on the field gas, applied voltage, and detector geometry. With, such, with sufficient gas gain, the energy deposited by individual charged particle tracks can be recorded as pulse height single event spectrum. As what we say earlier, uh, a gas field detector can operate in three regions. So in order for us, or in order for a gas field detector to operate in a specific region, we have to increase the applied voltage. So in proportional counter, um, if we multiply the voltage applied, so there will be an increase of electric field. And we all know that once that an electric field um, applies to the electrode, it will attract the uh, positive ion and the electron, the free electron. So due to the strong field, the positive ion and the electrode 
will collide to the molecules of the medium, which is um, sometimes it's aluminum, and resulting to the further ionization, which is also known as the secondary ionization. So this secondary uh, ionization, uh, there will be an accumulative uh, additional uh, positive ions and electrodes or electrons due to the collision of the medium. As the positive ions um, and electrons increases, uh, the generated current pulse will also increase. And we all know that the electrometer measures the, the current to to measure the radiation dose because uh, the current is proportional to the radiation dose. So this is an example of a proportional counters. The next um, survey meter is the neutron area survey meter. So neutron area survey meter operate in the proportional region so that the photon background can be easily discriminated against. Thermal neutron detectors usually have a coating of boron compound on the inside of the wall or the counter is filled with uh, boron trifluoride gas. A thermal neutron interaction with a boron 10 nucleus causing a uh, reaction in neutron or alpha particles and the alpha particles can easily be detected by their ionizing interaction. To detect fast neutrons, the same counter is surrounded by a moderator made of hydrogenous material. So the neutron area survey meter also operates in the proportional region, same as the counter, um, count, the proportional counter. However, in order for us to um, to separate the proportional counter to the neutron area survey meter, the gas field detector should be modified because in proportional counter, uh, it can only detect low energy detect uh, low energy X rays, while the neutron area survey meter can detect fast neutrons and also the alpha particles. So this is um, a neutron area survey meter. Okay, so the next area survey meter is the Geiger-Muller counter or GM counter. A GM counter is a type of particle detector that measures ionizing radiation. It detects the emission of nuclear radiation, alpha particles, beta particles, or gamma rays by the ionization produced in a low pressure gas in a GM tube. The discharge spreads in the GM region throughout the volume of the detector and the pulse height becomes independent of the primary ionization or the energy of the interacting particles. In a GM counter detector, the gas multiplication spreads along the entire length of the anode and gas field detectors cannot be operated at voltages beyond the GM region because they continu continuously discharge. GM counters exhibit strong energy dependence at low photon energies and are not suitable for the use in pulse radiation fields. GM detectors suffer from very long dead times ranging from tens to hundred milliseconds. A port a portable GM survey meter may become paralyzed in a very high radiation field and yield a zero reading. GM survey meters are widely used at very low radiation levels. They are particularly applicable for leak testing and detection of radi radioactive contamination. So the GM counter also operates in the principle of the proportional counter. As we remember, uh, it will multiply or increase the applied voltage uh, in the electrode. It will create an increase of electric field. And this, this strong electric field will create collision of free electrons and the molecules of the medium resulting to the further ionization or also known as secondary ionization. If we will go back to this 
regions. This is also true in GM counter. As we further increase the voltage, the primary ionization will create a secondary ionization, and this secondary ionization will create further ions or electrons leading to the chain reaction. So as we increase the electron and positive ion, it will increase also the current, resulting to the increased measure of radiation dosed by the electro electrometer rather. So we cannot detect the low energy particles uh, to high energy particles because they will create the same amount of current pulse. So GM counter cannot distinguish between the energy of different particles, but this is good for counting the numbers of particles that enter in the, in the chamber. So uh, there is another region um, after the GM counter region. And this is region, this region we, we want to avoid. We want to avoid this because uh, this region is called a region of continuous discharge, meaning as we increase the applied voltage, there will, uh, it will lead to the strong field. And this strong field will lead to the ionization of gas inside the chamber. So even though there is no radiation enters the chamber, there will be a, a continuous discharge leading to the pulse reading of the radiation. So this region, uh, uh, we want to avoid this region beyond the GM counter. So that's how uh, a gas field detector works. So this is a sample of a GM counter. And that's how gas field detectors operate. Now let's go to the solid state detectors area survey meter. So solid state detectors area survey meters, we have scintillation detector and semiconductor detectors. So in solid state detectors, it uses a phenomenon whereby a material is subject, subjected to a stimulus. And this stimulus could be uh, a mechanical pressure, heat, or radiation, and then it will produce or emit light. So um, in solid state detector, it consists of solid materials, uh, usually with fluorescence, phosphorescence, and semiconducting properties. Usually in solid state detectors, uh, the concept has two stages. These are the storage process and the retrieval process. For a storage process, we subject the decimeter to a stimulus, which is a radiation. And the second process, which is the retrieval process, we read the storage signal after the stimulus. So let's discuss first the scintillation detector. So scintillator detectors are detectors based on scintillation and certain organic and inorganic crystals contains activator atoms emit scintillations upon absorption of radiation and are referred to as phosphors. High atomic number phosphors are mostly used for the measurement of gamma rays, while plastic scintillators are mostly used with beta particles. Scintillating phosphors include solid organics materials such as anthracene, steel bean, and plastic scintillators as well as thallium activate, activated inorganic phosphors such as sodium iodide thallium or cesium iodide thallium. A photomultiplier tube or PMT is optically coupled to a scintillator to convert the light pulse into an electric pulse. Some survey meters use photodiodes in place of PMT. So let's take a look on the scintillator detector. So the parts of scintillation detector are scintillator, which is made of a sodium iodide thallium 
or cesium iodide thallium. We also have the PMT or photomultiplier tube. We have the photocathode. We have the dynodes, which is composed of electrodes. We also have the anode, the amplifier, and then the multi channel analyzer. The principle of the scintillation detector is that when a radioactive source enters the medium, the scintillator will trap the electron. So when the electron trapped to the crystal structure of the scintillator, it satisfied the first stage of a solid state detector, which is the storage process. So when the electron trapped to the crystal, it will emit light photon, and this light photon carries an energy. So the light will interact to the photocathode. So the photocathode is a medium that experiences photoelectric effect. Wherein the light photon hits the photocathode with enough energy, it can eject the free electron, and the electron will then attach to the dynodes that is composed of electrodes. So, when the electron attaches to the first electrode, it will generate an ionization leading to the creation of electron. So, due to the potential difference in each electrode, the electron will be accelerated to the second electrode, then creating another ionization and lead to the chain reaction to the other electrodes, resulting to the creation of significant current pulse. And this pulse uh, signal will then collect by the anode and will transfer to the amplifier for further amplification. Then it will be the current pulse will then convert it into a radiation dose by a multi-channel analyzer. And that's how we measure the radiation dose using the scintillator detectors. Now, in order for us to detect different kinds of particles that enters to the medium, we have to modify the scintillator. So for, uh, for sodium iodide, it's used to detect gamma particles. For the cesium iodide, it used to detect protons and alpha particles. And for the zinc sulfide, we use that to detect alpha particles. So the next solid state detector for area monitoring is the semiconductor detector. Semiconductor detector. Bulk conductivity detectors are formed from Intrinsic semiconductors a very high bulk resistivity. They act like solid state ionization chambers on exposure to radiation and belong to the class of solid state detectors. Extrinsic semiconductors such as silicon or germanium are used to form junction detectors. The sensitivity of solid state detector is about 10 to the 40 times higher than that of gas field detectors owing to the lower average energy required to produce an ion pair and solid detector materials compared with air and higher density of the solid detector material compared with air. Semiconductor is a solid state detector that made, of, made up of semiconductor detector. So semiconductor is a material that we can distinguish from insulators and conductors by saying that they have an intermediate gap. So this is a comparison of semiconductors from insulators and conductors. If you will see, uh, we can distinguish semiconductors from insulators and conductors by checking the difference of their band gaps. We all know that a material is composed of atoms and molecules that form a crystal structure. And there is an electron uh, in the outermost layer of this atom, and they can be distinguished either uh, free electrons or electrons that bound to the atom. If the electron is bound to the atom, it means that they cannot move around and cannot help to the conduction of electricity. 
but if the electron is free to move, it helps to the conduction of electricity. So this electron can be distinguished by looking at the energy level because they form as known as the s band. So in uh, semiconductor detectors or in solid state detectors, uh, there are two kinds of bands. This is the valence band and also the conduction band. So valence band, these are bound to the atom. It means that the electron in the valence band is not free to move and they are not helpful in the conduction. Of While in the conduction band, the electrons here are uh, free to move and they are helpful in the conduction of electricity. If you will see on this slide, um, you will observe that the band gap in the insulators are too high. Uh, the reason why uh, the electron in the valence band cannot jump to the conduction band and they cannot generate electricity. On the other hand, uh, there is no band gap in the conductors. Actually, the conduction band and valence band overlaps to each other. And it's easy for the electrons in the valence band to jump to the conduction band and to generate electricity. While on the semiconductors, the band gap is actually about one electron volt. So if you um, apply a stimulus here, for example, radiation or heat, it's easy for the electron in valence band to jump to the conduction band and form um, an electricity or signal. And that's how the principle of the semiconductor uh, use in detecting radiation as a area survey meter. This principle in the semiconductor detectors in detecting radiation. So again, in solid state physics or solid state detector, uh, there are two process. First is to uh, store the information and the second process is to retrieve the information. So we, in storing the information, we subject the dosimeter to a stimulus and this stimulus could be a radiation or um, heat. So in area survey meter, we use uh, radiation as a stimulus in storage process. So here, when the radiation or incident photon enter, the valence, the electron valence band will be excited and it will jump to the conduction band. And once that the electron here in the conduction Bond, it will be collected by an electrode and the electrode will generate a current or a signal pulse that later on will be measured by an electrometer. And those are the area survey meters. Now let's go to the personal dosimeters. 